Yo, what's going on guys, Sor here. Today, I'm actually going to be doing a voice meter tutorial. I'm going to be going over what the program is, what you can do with it, and a lot of useful tips for it. Anyways guys, hope you enjoy. Let's get right into it. To connect your mic, you're going to be going over to one of these hardware inputs. It doesn't matter which one, they're all going to do the same exact thing. But just for simplicity, I'm just going to keep it on my first input because, you know, I'm only going to be having one. So all you need to do is click right under hardware input one. It's going to say select input device. You click that and depending on what you have, you're going to be seeing a lot of options. So you're going to be seeing if you're using a USB mic, you're going to be seeing either WDM or MME. So you're now saying, what are those? What do those mean? WDM is basically called a Windows driver module. It's another type of audio connection and it actually is known for having lower latency than over MME. MME is called Microsoft Multimedia Environment and is pretty much virtually in every PC. But like I said, WDM does have lower latency. But the thing about this program is that it comes stock with a higher latency floor. So I'm actually going to be showing y'all how to reduce that as well. So you should find your WDM mic. For me, it's it's um, line one or two in Audio Air because I'm using a audio interface. You can use an audio interface, but if you are using an audio interface, you're gonna be wanting to use the KS option. I forgot what it defined as, but uh, yeah, KS is better for your interface. But yeah, go ahead and choose WDM for your mic. So when I do that, it's gonna work the same. Then there we go, we got your mic inputted. So what does what? You got all these here. So these are audio streams whenever these are activated that's sending the audio stream into the next channel so a1 is going to be going to whatever you set it as if you look up here to the top right of the program a1 is where you choose your speakers and obviously i'm going to be using my audio interface but you're going to be wanting to choose wdm for whatever your speakers are you can use monitoring speakers or you can use headphones it doesn't matter once that's done you're going to be having the A1 defaultly on, you should be hearing yourself now. So obviously, if you hear yourself and you don't want to do that, just click off of A1 right here, and then you're going to stop vocal monitoring. Next is B1. B1 is basically sending the virtual or the, the audio stream out into a virtual cable. And like I said earlier in the example, that virtual cable will act as a mic input for a program. Yeah, it's basically sending the processed audio. On the topic of processed audio, you have this. This is what's going to be making your mic sound good for the most part. It varies with every mic, obviously, and it also varies on how you like it, but I usually keep mine up here. As you can tell, when I reset it, you can see how my mic quality is different. Sounds a, I want to say worse, but it's not bad, but obviously moving this around is going to make it sound better. So yeah, you just fiddle with that. You can just drag it. If you want to reset it, you can just double click it. And uh, yeah, that's how you move it around and uh, get those effects. So once you get your voice meter banana installed, you can actually open up control panel, go to hardware and sound, manage audio devices. And I recommend here, let me show disable devices. I recommend finding voice meter aux input on playback and voice meter aux output and recording and disabling both of them. You won't be needing them. You're only going to be needing IO for recording and VAIO for playback. Virtual audio cables. You can go down here to the bottom right where you're speaker icon is and you can choose voice meter input what this is going to do it's going to be taking your windows audio oops let me close that out it's going to take your windows audio and it's going to go into voice meter and then that processed audio and voice meter is going to go out into your speakers where you selected your speakers in a1 how do you process your audio you actually look over here where virtual inputs are you see voice meter viio this is why i told you to delete aux we won't be needing aux so basically, we got a we got a small equalizer here. You have treble, which is your higher frequencies. You got your mids, and then you got your bass frequencies. And uh, obviously, you should know you should know what they are. You know what they do. Bass obviously increases bass in your headphones. You got your treble. Decrease them if you wanted, but um, I just keep it by itself because I use my audio interface anyways. You can also use this right here to make your audio go from left to right or rear and front doesn't really matter and um all you really need to be looking at here is having the a1 on you're also going to be seeing a b1 on right here you're going to want to disable that because if you're using this voice meter input selection instead of your regular speakers it's actually going to be looping your windows audio through your mic into that input you don't want that it may be useful for some situations but that's obviously dependent on 
Alright, now we're going to be going over the menu option inside of voice meter. So, go up here to the top right, you're going to see the menu tab. Go ahead and click that. And what you're really going to be wanting to look at is system tray. You're going to be wanting it to run at startup. Voice meter needs to be active for all the effects to take place. And it doesn't really take up anything in your task manager. It doesn't take up any RAM. So, yep, yeah, go ahead and run at startup. I, I have show app on startup as well. And uh, run voice meter on start definitely have those three on you can also once you got your your effects that you like you can save your settings somewhere where you remember you can put them in documents or something and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for here if you go down here towards more at the bottom you're going to be seeing system settings slash options click that and now we're going to be talking about how to reduce latency so if you go down here where it says buffering mme wdm ks and asio if you remember me talking about mme and wdm and how WDM has a lower latency than MME. You can actually see that right here. So MME, I have this set at the lowest option. It was set at 1024, but I put it down to 480, which is the lowest. The lower you go, the less latency you're going to have, which means the faster your mic is going to be activated, the faster the stream is going to be. So I recommend just going through all four of these and putting them to the very As you can see here, WDM is 128, MME is 480. WDM is faster, and I'm I'm using KS obviously, and WDM and KS are the same speed. But uh, yeah, as well as go over here to engine mode and put that to Swift, and uh, you should be good for this. You got lower latency, you should feel better. You can come back over here to A1, listen to yourself. You can actually notice a difference on how fast you pick up yourself, and uh, yeah, it's just really cool. Okay, so now we're gonna be focusing over here at the master section of voice meter. We're going to be focusing on the first bar of the physical section and the first bar of the virtual section. Starting with the first bar of the physical section, all right here is going to be your speaker effects, aka A1 up here where you chose your speakers. So if you right click on this EQ here, you actually have a full in depth equalization chart. And if you don't know how to work with these, you're going to have to look at another video. It's too much to explain because um, it's not... It's not hard, but if you don't have any experience on what frequencies does what, then it's going to be hard, you know, obviously, because you don't know what to do. But basically, if you do learn how to use this, you can even go in here and just make your mic sound even way better. But obviously, that that's dependent. But uh, it will work a lot. It'll, it'll work really good, actually. And um, obviously, you got to mute here. So if you press mute, it's going to be muting out sound. And then you have these modes right here. I keep it on normal. It doesn't do anything. And you have your mono converter, which keeps it the same sound on both of your speakers. Now we're going to be going over here to the virtual section. This is going to be your microphone effects. Obviously, you can see I already have an EQ on. It's just a little um, bass cut right here, a high pass filter. So virtually literally the same thing, except these are active on your mic. Whatever. You, so basically what I recommend doing, if you do know how to use an equalization chart, you do the effects first while listening to yourself in A1 over here. Do the effects, and once you found the effects that you like on your mic, go up here to copy all for your speakers. Go over here to virtual input one, right click the equalization, and then click paste. And that will paste the effects over into your actual mic output. And then you can go ahead and disable the EQ chart on your speakers. Unless you want to, unless you want it, you know, it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, that's how you use it. You have your mono, obviously, again, mute, your modes, you can mess around with those. I keep it on normal again. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for over here at the master section. All right, so lastly, we're going to be showing how to actually take the processed vocals from voice meter and send them into a program. For this example, I'm going to be using voice or I'm going to be using Discord. Now, remember, anything that has a microphone input, any type of program, whether it be OBS, Discord, Skype, whatever, just whatever has a microphone input this will work for a game will, will use it just whatever so you go to input device on whatever program you're using and make sure you use voice meter output vb audio v a i o this is also why we got rid of the aux cable because you got to use v a i o so once you put that in into voice meter or whatever you're using or not voice meter into discord or whatever you're using you're good all the process audio from voice meter is going to be going into this virtual cable acting like your mic and going into your friend's ears, yeah, pretty much. 
and uh, as well as output device. Some people have problems where if they use their speakers regularly, they can't hear their buddies on Discord. So if you have that problem, just go to output device and put it to voice meter input. To put it simply, for input device, voice meter output. For output device, voice meter input. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you connect it to a program. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for a personal use of voice meter. Um, there's also V-Band, but I'm not going to click on that. That's for connecting like your computer to another computer through Wi-Fi or audio cables. But um, that's obviously for a later tutorial if I do eventually do that. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you found this informative, please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. At least like, you know, at least like the video, you know, get it up there. And uh, if you have any buddies that want to do this, obviously share it to the friends. And um, yeah, I hope you found it good, informative. And uh, yeah, anyways, this is Soar, signing out.